Good morning. Welcome to Q and Amico. I'm Kara. And um, I didn't have any specific questions before coming on today. So uh, I'm going to be working on a plate. Let me switch you overhead and I'll show you what I'm doing. So this plate has two coats of rainforest, I'm sorry, storm, C27 storm, covered with two coats of C10 snow, and there is a sticker in between the snow and the rainforest that I'm trying to reuse for another plate. Let's see if I can do that. So. This is a uh, vinyl cutout, like you would use for a Cricut. Mm, some of it got underneath. That's okay. So, if you have any questions for me today, you can go ahead and ask them. It still has a little stickiness, so I think that will work for my other project. So then this will be a blue fish in a speckled body of water, sort of look, and I'm just going to take off some glaze. So let's see, last week was in Sika, and uh, we had a blast. If you have never been or don't know what uh, what Inseca is, it is the National Council on Education and Ceramic Art. And originally it was teachers and uh, mostly college professors. So for this, for this plate, I'm going to do it in reverse, so the fish will be white. So I'm going to put it on first. So college professors and uh, students, and the purpose was education, uh, ceramic department education uh, in American universities. So. Um, it's been going on since the 60s, and at this point, I'm not sure exactly how many people go to the annual conference. I would guess it's uh, around 6,000, and uh, they are a very, very social bunch of people, and you do not need to be in a college program or even interested in a college program to be welcomed at Inseca. Anybody who has an appreciation of clay, including hobby potters, collectors, uh, just everyone who has an interest in the world of ceramics and art uh, will feel welcome at Inseca. So I'm trying to get the white off so that it doesn't contaminate my rain, my storm when I put it on here. And it's just a little tacky at this point. It's not super, super sticky. There we go. And I am using a bigger plate, so the fish looks a little small. But that's okay. Hi, Michelle. So what I'm doing, uh, answering questions today, but what I'm doing is a combination of Storm C27 with Snow C10 over it to create this kind of oil spot effect that you can see here. And it's going to come out just like this because I put the sticker on first and then I'm going to put the Storm on. This one is with Rainforest. So this is going to come out more blue and less green. But um, the fish will be white, and the background will be blue, white, white with blue speckles coming through. And this oil spot effect happens with snow over 
storm and rainforest, and to a lesser extent with, uh, it works that way with obsidian too. Here is the opposite. So this is what this plate will be, is a blue fish in a speckled white background. And it just, how, how that works is just depends on when I put the uh, sticker on. So yes, we are all, Michelle, we are all super excited about the new glazes. We did have uh, sample, uh, not samples to give away, but samples on display of the new uh, glazes. And uh, there was a lot of excitement about them. So now that I've got my sticker down, I'm just going to brush over directly over it with the storm and yes there is lots of excitement if you want to see more uh, images of the new glazes those um, uh, you can find a video that shows some of them on our Instagram at Amico Brent So I'm just going to brush glaze over this. So there are six new glazes, and they are called the Potter's Choice Flux Line, so PCF. And if you love Honey Flux, and I know that many of us do, one of my favorite glazes, if you like Honey Flux, you are going to love the new PCF glazes. All the things you love about the Honey Flux glaze, but in new colors. So there's one extremely generous coat. I would say that's even like one and a half coats. I'm going to set that aside because this, I was working on this yesterday and I didn't have a chance to glaze the back, so I'm going to do that today. Let me, there we go, go to the end screen so you can see me as well as uh, see what I'm working on. So do we have any other questions today? Uh, so Heather is asking, when does the flux line come out? And our plan is that they should be shipping out to distributors by early May. So I don't have a specific date, but I know that it will be in about two months. And I know that we are all anxiously awaiting their release. So, got a little bit on the foot. That's okay. I will be sponging the foot before I put this in the kiln. And I'm just going to put this, the storm on the foot inside the ring. I don't want to get too many coats of glaze going on there. What other things have come up lately? I did want to reassure people, you know, I know that uh, when I tell you that we've changed our gum solution it sounds like uh, you know that's a major change it really is not and it does not change the way the glazes look or fire it just changes a little bit 
in how they apply. And generally, I feel like it is, an, it is a change for the better because it makes the glazes uh, more fluid, easier to brush, less thick. They are not watered down. I know that, that that has been floated a couple times, so to speak. Some people have suggested that that's why the glazes are more fluid. It is not. They are exactly the same water content as ever, but the gum solution does act a little bit like a dispersant. Now let's move that aside. Clean this off so I don't get glaze on my foot. So if you go to our Instagram, going back to the Enseca topic, if you go to our Instagram, you will see that we have videos of some of the people who, the artists who demonstrated at our booth, including some of their favorite tips for am, using Amico products. They have some really fantastic ways of working with our products that you may want to check out. So go and look at that. There's my, I think that'll be sufficient for my storm. So when I'm working in the studio, I usually do work like this where I go back and forth between multiple pieces. I'll have everything uh, on a table and just work on an assembly line kind of thing. Um, will Emco be putting information somewhere about the glazes that need more coats? Um, and Doris asks, how will I know, how do I know when I have brushed on enough glaze? I mostly use the dipping method because I have ruined pieces from inadequate brushed glaze application. Uh, Doris, I really recommend that you make a small test but the, uh, what we recommend is your glaze, when it's dry before it goes into the kiln, should be about the thickness of a dime, which is about 1.5 millimeters. So you can actually like uh, put a needle into your uh, glaze layer and measure that. It doesn't need to be terribly thick to be enough. Uh, with oatmeal, I'm actually finding that you need fewer coats rather than more coats. And uh, with Blue Routile, when I did tests with Blue Routile, uh, it may need more coats just because it's going on thinly. It's not that the glaze is watered down. It's when we did a, uh, uh, a sled test where we have the exact same thickness of glaze, it came out the same. It was just that in brushing, because it's more fluid, it, see, it, it takes more coats because it's going on thin. I know that seems like a very small distinction, but uh, you are still getting the same amount of glaze. So just measure your, uh, your thickness if you can. Uh, and I recommend making a small test tile with different thicknesses to see at what thickness your application is working. Okay, that is the best I can tell you. Uh, but we still recommend three coats of glaze. It's just blue rutile is very noticeably different 
when it's a little thinner shows a shows a difference more and like I said with oatmeal I actually found that it needed fewer coats which is a little strange I think I didn't get enough on the on the thin of my fish so I'm going to put a little bit more on there and then I'm done with the storm for now about your seaweed uh, and Michelle blue rutile I think that is the only one that needs uh, I don't think it needs six coats I would say uh, four coats is probably enough unless you're using a brush that's just not getting enough glaze onto onto your pot to begin with it will make a difference uh, uh, Sorry, it will make a difference what kind of brush you use. So uh, a better brush will apply more glaze in each coat. So uh, that's why I say to you to make a test uh, to see what your application, how many coats you need for your application. And and dipping may work uh, just perfectly fine for the blue rutile. Make a test. Do not glaze a whole bunch of things, uh, thinking that that's how that's going to. Uh, solve your problems. Uh, Kristen uh, asks, I watched you glaze these. You seem to be putting on the second coat before the first coat is totally dry. And I do that for, for, I do that for these because of the demo aspect. Uh, if I'm in my studio, I do let them dry until they're dry to the touch completely and so I'm still seeing a little bit of gloss here and I'm not going to apply the the uh, snow until the gloss is all gone I'm not worried about the fish because it's going to come off but uh, there's some areas in here that I see that still have a little bit of sheen to them so I'm going to let those dry uh, Gabriella asks about seaweed because the seaweed glaze is really watery. I know it is very, very thin and it is normal. Um, you can uh, thicken it by letting it dehydrate a little bit. I also know some people will thicken their underglazes by microwaving them, which I suppose would work for the seaweed. If you do that, use fewer coats. Don't use a full three coats if you've thickened your seaweed. Uh, but uh, I have noticed that and I know that it is just it is the nature of the materials that make up seaweed that it tends to disperse more over time so it is it does go on really thin uh, like I said if you wish to to dehydrate it uh, that will work if you're finding that it is uh, too messy that would be a good way to do it is to just dehydrate it a little bit uh, and then just use a little bit less like one or two coats because you'll be getting more material now uh, uh, you could also try dipping it that might work uh, and yes uh, unfortunately that is pretty normal at this point so let me see Oh, I've missed a few comments here. Uh, which glazes am I using? Yes, I'm using C27 Storm as my base, and then I'm going to put C10 Snow over it uh, once I, and yes, you do see the faint outline of a fish there. That is a cutout from a, a vinyl cutout. Uh, an indigo float, if it's, if it's going on very thin, I still say, uh, use three coats and cosmic tea dust is extremely thin but again three three coats uh, we try to to formulate everything to work its best at three coats blue rutile tends to be a little challenging but that is our target is everything is three coats and even with the new gum solution I'm finding that most of the glazes still work as expected at three coats. 
So I'm going to peel this off. The glaze around it is dry enough that I'm not worried about smudging it. There we go. Oh, I got a little bit underneath the fin. That's okay. Because what brush am I using? I always use I always use my Amico size 4 fan brushes. When I'm glazing something large, I'll switch to a 6. Uh, but these are natural fiber. You can see they're super soft and very, very fluffy, and they hold a lot of glaze. Sorry. For anybody who has sound issues, this might be the moment when you want to mute me for a little bit because it, it's the scratchy noises. Okay. So let me see. My plan on this is I'm going to go over it with uh, two coats of snow. So the fish will be white. And then I'm going to use some obsidian and poppy spots on the fish so it'll look like a koi fish swimming in a speckly sea of storm. Oof. I'm not even very sensitive to that sound, and that one is a little rough. I might have to wait. Uh, vinyl stickers. Um, so, Kathleen, um, I cut this out by hand. Actually, I just used, let me see. I just used scissors and uh, it's, it's Cricut vinyl, but I didn't use a Cricut. You can just buy the vinyl sheets at craft stores where they sell Cricuts or uh, the same kind of vinyl that's used. We, we did, um, in discussions yesterday, uh, it has been said that it's best if you use a medium adhesive vinyl instead of a, a super strong adhesive because the super strong adhesive can peel glaze layers off if you're doing this over a glaze or an underglaze. But I just cut them out. Uh, now we do have a Cricut, uh, but I like to show cutting them out because it's easy and you don't require special equipment but you could also you know ask around see if you know somebody who has a cricket there are so many people with them these days it blows my mind okay almost there sorry about that noise this is a really super fun uh, technique, and you know I've I've done this with all kinds of imagery. You can do flowers, you can do leaves, you can do fish, anything that you can cut out or use a Cricut to cut out. You can do this. Okay. All right. And that is dry enough. You know it's not going to come off on me. I just have some on me already. Uh, it's dry enough where I can start applying the snow, so I'm going to put everything else away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so the thinner the application of glazes, the smaller the oil spot will be. The thicker the storm, the bigger the spots. The thinner the storm, or thicker the snow, the smaller the spots. But I suggest you kind of try it out, see what you like. I can still see where the fish is, so that'll make it easy for me to put some spots on it. And I'll get this fired this week and I'll show it next week when I do glazing with Yamico. So 
Okay, there's my snow. Oh, I need more on the fish. Are there any questions today? I'm looking for trying to get some of our employees or some local artists who would like to come on the show sometime so we can have segments. And uh, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to do another coat of snow. And then I'm going to, oh, not, not obsidian. I'm going to use charcoal. That's right. I want to use charcoal because it's more translucent and poppy. So gray and orange and white koi fish in a, in a plate. This would be a lot of fun to do some plants in, maybe two fish in one plate. So... I will let you all go. If you have more questions, please feel free to drop me a line. You can message me on Facebook at Amico Brent. And I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me in my glazing adventures. Have a great day.